In today's video, we're talking about backdrops. Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. So today's video is gonna be all about backdrops and I'm gonna try and make this a no nonsense video. I'm just gonna give you the facts so that if you are looking to purchase your first backdrop, then uh, you'll have all the information that you need. So I think a backdrop is a really good investment if you're getting started in photography or you're looking to maybe move up a level uh, because a backdrop allows you to clear up the background of wherever, wherever it is that you're shooting. So you could be shooting in a garage or in a living room or in a bedroom and just putting up one of these uh, it clears up the entire background so that you may, it, it might look like you're shooting in a studio. So it's a really good way uh, to up the quality of the photo uh, without really a, a lot of money. Uh, the other thing that it does do is that when you put a backdrop, it becomes, uh, particularly like a clear backdrop, like one of these ones, then it becomes a lot easier for the viewer to just focus on what's on the screen. So it, could, it could just be the model or whatever, or if it's a product, then the eyes go straight for that subject because there's nothing else in the photograph uh, to interfere with that. Okay, so when it comes to backdrops, there's a lot of solutions available out there. Uh, they tend to fall under two categories though. The first one is uh, this. So these are paper backdrops, uh, paper rolls, and these have been around for ages. If you go into any studio, um, you're probably gonna find something like this, uh, apart from a cyclorama. Um, but again, this is probably the most basic type and the most well-known and mostly used. The second one would be the fabric-based systems. So that's when you just get a couple of light stands, you put a cross beam across like this one here, okay? Uh, these beams expand, okay? So you can make your backdrop as wide as this will go. And just using clamps, you hang your material from uh, from the rod and you're done. And you don't need, although they make specific uh, backdrop material for that, the, the fabrics like muslin, uh, you don't need that. When I first got started, I used a bed sheet and that worked fine. Um, the other system that you've got available in the fabrics is the uh, pop-up ones. And that's these ones here. So this is just like a giant reflector, except it, it's just, you know, it's massive. And, uh, and it, in this particular case, this is just a white, uh, a white backdrop. Now, the reason I don't like the fabric-based systems is that no matter how you store them, and I've used some of the most expensive ones, but it doesn't matter how you store them, you always get wrinkles and you have to take care of those wrinkles before you use it because it will show up in your photograph. And you would think that something like this, um, you know, because this is a pop-up um, uh, system and when you pop it up, it's got the frame and it stretches it out. You would think that something like this would actually stretch it out to the point that we, it would get rid of the, uh, of the wrinkles, but it doesn't. You still get a little bit, um, a, a little bit of marks in there as well. And uh, so that takes a long time to actually take care of that before you start shooting. You usually have to have an iron or a steamer uh, to get rid of all those marks before you can get started uh, shooting. So for myself, I prefer to use the paper drops every single time. Uh, they're ready to go out of the box. And if you do get any wrinkles or any tears, all you gotta do is just cut that section of paper off, roll down some more and you're ready to go. Uh, each one of these rolls I think has like something like 10 meters of paper so that it will last you a long time, uh, especially if you look after them. I store these in the boxes that they came in. That's worked really well for me up till now. So basically, uh, whatever box they came in, uh, they just go back in the box and I store them vertically in the office. Now, these paper rolls come in two different sizes, mainly. Uh, it's an industry thing. You get the smaller ones, which is what I've got here. This is a 1.36 meters, I think it is. So that's about that high there. And uh, you've also got the larger ones, which are about 2.7 meters or thereabouts. Uh, now these are really easy to transport. The larger ones are not. And uh, the larger ones don't fit in my car, for example, and I have to put them on the roof rack, but that's just fine. But these ones here is mainly what I, what I uh, use when I'm on site. This is fine to shoot one. Uh, you can even get two people in front of one of these and, and you'd be fine. And uh, what I love about these is how easy it is to set up, especially when you compare them to the fabric-based systems. I don't use a, a, a backdrop system at all for this. I just use a C-stand and uh, I've got one back here. If you don't know what a C-stand is, this is a C-stand, which is uh, um, 
it's just a stand. It's a little bit more uh, sturdy and a little bit heavier than a regular light stand. And also you've got this knuckle with a rod in here, and that is perfect for mounting one of these. In fact, let me show you how easy it is to set one of these up. So. Okay, so that took about 30 seconds. It's up, it's ready to go, and I didn't need help from anyone else. And that's one of the reasons I like this setup. It just gets me going quickly and saves me time. Now, if I wanted to use one of the bigger uh, rolls, so one of the wider rolls, then one light stand would not be able to support that. You would need, what I would recommend is to get two C-stands and then just have one on either end uh, with the rods. That is going to hold your, uh, your backdrop very securely. Uh, otherwise, what you can do is you can just go and get couple of light stands and get one of these rods that I showed you earlier and then the rod just goes through the inside of the paper roll and you're pretty much ready to go. Now uh, something that I just thought of is that one of the uh, the other differences between this setup and the fabric uh, systems is that if you have a studio sort of, sort of like what I've got here which it's a small space and I'm not that far from my background. If I was to shoot, say, headshots or portraits in front of that backdrop there, and I was shooting at, say, F11 or F16, where I'm getting a lot in focus, if you use one of the fabric-based uh, systems, potentially you could be picking up some of the texture in the fabric, which you probably don't want. With a paper, you're never going to uh, run into that problem because it's perfectly smooth. So that's something to keep in mind if you're going to go for a fabric-based system and you're working in a small space, you're probably not, you're probably going to be limited to shooting uh, at a lower f-stop so that you can blur the background so that you don't pick up the texture in the fabric. All right, so let's talk about colors now because that's one of the things that I, when I first got started and I started uh, buying backdrops, um, my idea was to have this massive collection of all these different colored backdrops so that I could use for all sorts of different things. And they can get expensive really, really quickly. So what I've worked out is a different way of doing it and that's what I'm gonna show you now. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna uh, get rid of this background here and I'm gonna replace it with a gray one that I've got in here. So let me just go quickly change that and then I'll come back. Okay, so what I've done now is I've changed the backdrop to a dark gray backdrop. Uh, it probably looks black to you because there's not a lot of light uh, on the background, uh, but it is dark gray. Now, it is a neutral gray color. What that means is that it's got equal amounts of red, green, and blue. So when you mix red, green, and blue, uh, whether it be paints or colors or whatever, in equal amounts, you will end up with a gray, a neutral gray, which means it doesn't have an overpowering uh, green or blue or red uh, on it, it is purely neutral. And the cool thing about those is that you can light them and they will pick up a color, whatever color you light them with. Now you can't tell uh, from here because I've, but I've got a light behind me. Okay, let me just show you. Okay, so I've just got uh, an LED light there and I've got some gel in front of it as well. So there's some blue gel in here. I'm not sure if you can see that, but when I turn on that light, then if you look at the background, it's gonna pick up the color from the gel. So let me turn that on. Okay. And now I've got a blue background and I can do that because the backdrop is neutral gray. If that was a different color, if it already had a color, then it wouldn't work or you just end up with some random color. Now, this is a much more economical way to do this, to change backdrop colors than having to invest in different uh, different colored paper rolls. It's much cheaper to just get yourself a whole bunch of different gels, okay? And uh, you can light this with a flash as well. So that's usually how I do it. Um, and uh, just in front of your flash, you put some gel and all of a sudden that light now picks up the color of the gel and you've got a different colored background. And uh, you can get packs of these uh, for not a lot of money uh, as opposed to paper backdrops, which um, you know, you could probably get a collection of gels really for the same amount of uh, money that you spent on a paper roll. A lot easier to store as well. So overall, if you're just getting started and you want to experiment with different colored backgrounds, then what I would recommend is uh, get some gels, 
spend some money on some gels, experiment with that and see uh, the kind of results that you get. Also, um, you can do things like gradients. So at the moment, there is a bit of a gradient around me. So you can see that it gets a little bit darker towards the edges of the backdrop uh, because I've got the light pointed straight at the middle. If I wanted to fill the whole frame with equal amounts of blue, then all I would have to do is move that background back and uh, or move uh, move the background further away from, from the light and that would fill it in. But it's, it's, a, it's a good creative way that you can go in and just add some different dynamics to uh, to your light. It doesn't have to be a glow like what I've got here. You could also move the light, for example, to the side. Okay, and now the gradient just looks a little bit different as well. I like the sort of gradient coming from the center of the picture going out, so that's why I have it this way. And then I just simply hide the light behind me and uh, it's just a nice way uh, to be able to play around with colors. Uh, again, you can change that into, you know, different sort of colors. I've got yellows, I've got oranges, I've got greens. Uh, these come in all sorts of different colors. So that is what I would recommend to you before you start thinking about uh, getting a collection of different types of papers. And just before we go on, if I could ask you for a favor, if you're enjoying this video or you're finding it interesting, if you could click the like button, it would make a massive difference to me and the channel. And if you haven't subscribed, consider doing so. I make videos like this all the time to help you with your photography. So if you don't wanna miss out on any of those, click the subscribe button, click the notification bell. That way you'll be notified when I upload a new video. And don't forget about ministryoffoto.com. That's my website where you're gonna find a lot of tutorials and uh, you'll also find things such as reviews and some downloads uh, such as Lightroom presets. It's completely free, so make sure you check it out. That's ministryofphoto.com. All right, so let me give you my recommendations on what I think you should buy if you're looking to get your first backdrop. Uh, first of all, you don't have to buy anything. You could just use whatever you've got. So if you've got a white bed sheet and you can hang that up somewhere and that's all you can get, then use that. But if you are looking to buy something, then I'm going to recommend that you go for a paper backdrop. Um, I don't think that is going to come to you as a surprise. I think I've made it clear that I prefer paper. Uh, but I would recommend that you go for a neutral uh, color. And I'm going to suggest a light uh, neutral gray. Now, this is a very specific neutral gray. And I'll put a link in the description if you're interested in getting this one. It's made by a company called Savage. And it picks up color really, really nicely when you light them with gels. But also on its own, it just looks really elegant. Uh, gray is one of those colors that just doesn't go out of style. So if you just need something quickly, this is just going to look really good on its own, even if you don't do anything like light it separately. Uh, the other thing is that uh, this acts like a giant white balance card as well, because it is essentially a giant gray card. It is a neutral gray. So at any point during your edit, if you need to correct the white balance on your photographs, you can simply uh, use the eyedropper tool in Lightroom and just click on the background and it will fix your white balance and correct it to the right temperature. So that's why I think that this is the perfect backdrop to start off with. If you haven't got anything and you're looking to get your first one, this is what I would recommend to people. And again, there'll be a link in the description if you're interested in purchasing one. So that's everything for this video. Um, I've had to move out of that room. That's why it looks a little bit different. But I did want to say that if you have any questions, the comments section below is the best place to leave your questions. Uh, otherwise, you can reach me through any of the usual social media platforms. Uh, again, you're going to find all the links in the description below. Please don't forget to click the like button. I want to thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next video.